Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you. God bless you. Welcome in. We are the of Jesus, the Living Evangelist and Center Community yes. Church. I am Apostle Dr. Doris Nickel Manning. And I am Bishop Dennis Manning. And we are lifting up the name of Jesus. And we are glad to be in the number one, one more, more time. time. We welcome you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Blessed Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. And we just ask you to go ahead, those of you who are on Facebook Live, to press like and share. Yes. Be that social media evangelist, allowing someone else to be able to hear the word of the Lord on this day. There's a word for you. Yes. And we know that God is going to speak to us, where it's going to edify our spirits, it's going to lift us up, and it's yes. going to give us the power we need to continue to run on. So once again, we welcome you. We tell you to come on in. Come on in. When the table is spread, yes. we're going to get started in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time and this hour. Well, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you Lord, we just want to say thank you for early morning rise and the blood just running warm through our veins and the activity for our, in the limbs. Lord, we just thank you for keeping us through this pandemic. Holy Ghost, have your way. You are welcome. Lord, lose us for your glory. Take us down into the storehouse. Bring us up into the old and to the new testament. Have your way today, God. Lord, we just want to say thank you for being so kind, so good. You are a merciful God. You are a liberty God. Yes. I Jehovah Java, yes. I was Jehovah Nisi, I was Jehovah Rasa. Lord, we thank you. We lift you up on high. Let the church say amen. 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 Glory to God. We're going to open with our scripture coming from Proverbs 25, verses 26 to 28. Proverbs 25, 26 to 28. A righteous man failing, excuse me, a righteous man falling down before the wicked is as a troubled fountain in a corrupt spring. It is not good to eat much honey, so for men to search their own glory is not glory. He that have no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. We got to guard ourselves. Amen. Amen. And we have to make sure that we are not exalting ourselves because God will exalt us in due time and due season. And we need to make sure that we're staying meek, humble, and mild as we go forth doing the work that God has called us to do. Because it's through him we live, move, and prove our being. Somebody say amen. amen. May the Lord and the blessings his already blessed word. Glory to God. I said lift up the name of Jesus. The one who intercedes for you both day in, day in, and in, out. Nighttime, noontime, all the time. I said lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Let's worship him. We didn't come here to sit and relax. You know, when we get to heaven, we're going to worship him. All day long. We're going to sing praises all day long. So we got to get in practice now. I don't know about you, but when I get in the presence of the Lord, it's a good feeling. It's a great feeling. Amen. It's a privilege to be able to go to the throne of praise and just say, Father, I love you. Father, I give you glory. Father, I give you honor. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for me. Come on, take this moment and just enter and say, Hallelujah. Thine is the glory. Hallelujah, Lord. I bless your name. You. you are worthy. You are worthy. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for covering me. Thank you for blessing me. Hallelujah. Despite of it all, you keep on blessing. You keep on keeping. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody just say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Glory to His wonderful name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for our peace. Thank you for our joy. Thank you for strength, oh God. Thank you for keeping us in our right mind. Thank you for loving on us, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Through my trials and tribulations, you're always there. Thank you, Jesus. You've been so good. Lord, when we thought we just didn't have enough, you were right there to push us further so that we can continue to run on. We say thank you, Jesus. You are my God, a wonderful Savior. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. Oh, Jesus. Jesus is the name 
name of the Lord. Oh, Jesus is the name of the Lord. Jesus is the name of the Lord. Most high. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Lord, we just thank and praise you for another opportunity to come into a space and time where we can connect with you, where we can draw nigh to you so that you can draw nigh unto us. Father, we ask that you bind up every distraction, that you would open up our understanding for those who have an ear to hear. Let them receive your word, Father God, wherein it will transform, renew, edify, and build up the spirit man, Father God, so that we can keep on running this race, oh God, with tenacity and zeal. Father, you are the potter, I am but the clay. Give me your divine words to say. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You can take your seat. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Today I want to talk about blessings. I want to talk about blessings. Hallelujah. You know, um, I was in a conversation with someone and, um, you know, they said, you know, I'm not like into like church, but I believe in God. And, you know, the conversation went uh, to the extent of the person expressing that sometimes they feel as if they don't get blessings. Like they hear other people talking how good God is. And they're like, well, you know, I work hard. I do this, I do that. But I don't really feel like I'm doing anything where I'm just blessed. And I said, whoa. <laughs> I said, you know, whoa. This was a good time and opportunity to just encourage and to share. First and foremost, if God wakes you up in the morning, the morning you are morning. blessed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. If you are in your right mind, you're able to tell your hands to move and to put this there and to pick this up, to clean that, to wash that, to arrange this, you are blessed. Yeah. If you are able to look at your feet and tell your feet to move and take you from point A to point B and then bring you back to point A, you are blessed. Yeah. If God kept you during the night and you slept during the night, and the death angel didn't come by. Mm. You are blessed. Lush. See, a lot of people don't understand that. But the main reason why a lot of people may feel as if they are not being blessed or that God skipped over them, trust and believe it's not God. It's you. It's you. Amen. you got to take some time to examine yourselves. A lot of times people don't understand that in all reality, it's not about God. Not but He wants to bless all of us. That's why when the sun shines, it shines on what? The just as well as the unjust. When it rains, it rains on the just as well as the unjust. But sometimes people feel that God has forgotten them. But in reality, there's certain things that have been done on our regard that need some changes. It needs some tweaking. We need to look at how we're doing things. It needs some transforming. We need to do some self-evaluation. In order for those blessings to pour into our lives. Blessings are there and blessings will come. But a lot of times people feel like they're not being blessed because they, they base it on materialistic things. They base it on how much how many dollars they have in their pocket or in their bank account. They base it on the type of car that they drive. They base it on how big or how you know magnificent their house is or their apartment or whatever. They base it on material things. But you have to understand, blessings are based on your attitude. That's why we have the be attitudes. These are the attitudes that you need to make sure become a part of your lifestyle. When you look at the beatitudes, the beatitudes are the onset. It helps you to have the attitude to receive a blessing. But a lot of people lack the attitude to receive a blessing. A lot of people lack understanding that in order to be blessed, there's an action for every reaction. A blessing is a reaction to the actions that we put out. When you fast, when you pray, when you read the word, don't we see things happen? Any person that's fasting and praying and reading the word, they say something that happened, you're not, you, you, you're not telling the truth. You skip or something. Because every time when we fast and when you go into the, the to the throne of grace and you say, Lord, I need direction. Lord, I need you to speak to me. He's going to tell you something that's going to help you at that specific time in your life to get you to the next place, to give you that answer, to give you that solution, to help you resolve a problem. But you got to go to God in prayer. 
You got to turn that plate down. You got to read the scripture. See, the word we hide in our heart so that we don't sin against God. Why? Because it's his word. See, when we have the word of God on the inside of us, when things happen, we're able to stand. We're able to allow for the word of God to flow through us so that we are able to say, uh-uh, Satan. No, the word says that we should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I studied my word. I read what the scriptures have said. This is the inspired word of God. It was written for as instruction for me to be able to, to sustain. So when you are in a, a, a time in your life and you feel like, well, what's happened to me? First and foremost, never ever look at somebody else. You don't know what that other person or individual has gone through to get their blessings. Even when you're in a relationship with your spouse, y'all are one in, in, as far as marriage is concerned, but there's still things that God does for each and every, the, the, the individuals. And then we are supposed to be able as the companion, as the partner to support it and to praise it and to thank God for it. You should never get jealous of your companion. Amen. You should never compete with your companion. Amen. When God blesses your companion, guess what? You bless too. Come on, man. Right? Yeah, right? When God gives something and it's just like, oh, God bless somebody, bless me with maybe, you know, a little $50. Guess what? $50 that I got, $25, I'm going to go to you some kind of way somehow. Right? Whether it's in the refrigerator, whether it's the lights turning on, you being blessed too. Right? We got to think to see people, but sometimes we get caught up. Money make you get caught up. Yeah? With material things that make you get caught up. See, that's why we just got to stay in the Word. That's why you got to stay in fasting and praying. Amen. Because when you are in a relationship, married folks, I'm talking about married folks, when you are in a relationship, y'all talking to, walk, except they agree together, except they agree. You need to be in agreement, and the majority of your agreement is going to be in the spirit. Because if you allow for the flesh to come in, y'all always going to be butt heads. I'm talking to somebody. Come on now. Somebody needs to hear. Well. But as, as couples, we're supposed to be there cheering one another on. When you hear good, when, when what has good news, that's good news for you too. We're supposed to rejoice with one another. We're supposed to be happy for one another. Why? You know what? Because another a blessing is on its way. A blessing is on the way. So we have to understand whatever things we feel like is going to lack and far, as far as the blessing category, it's time to check yourself. Let's look at Matthew. Matthew chapter 5. And I'm read from 1 through 12. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into the mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that, are, that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when ye Excuse me. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. The prophets that have gone on, they're our examples. We hear about Moses and we hear about Daniel. We, we, we hear about Elijah. We hear about Abraham. All of them have gone on before us. And you know what? They had their times where they were persecuted too, but they withstood the, the test of time and their names are still being uh, uh, talked about. And therefore, it, this is just encouraging us that we got to sustain the same thing too. All of these things are, it says, bless, 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 bless. That means that there's a blessing attached to it. Blessed are the poor in spirit, okay? For those of us that sometimes you feel like, you know, that you don't have enough in your spirit, you feel like you're weak in your spirit, man, that's all right. You're going to be blessed as long as you stay connected. As long as you understand that, you know what? That the kingdom of God is for you. As long as you understand, I may be feeling weak in this moment and in this time, but though I, I, I'm where I'm weak, God will make me strong. You're blessed. 
That's the whole point of me starting off the, the, the topic when I said he, he woke you up this morning. You're blessed. It says right here, you're poor in spirit. Yours is the kingdom of heaven. You're blessed. God knows when we get weak. God knows when we get tired. Uh, the bishop just said any good person that is a believer who said their faith never gets a, a, a quickened or your faith is never sometimes wavered. You're lying. You're not telling the truth. You're not telling the truth. All of us, the very best of us. I'm, I'm from the high archbishop dialect sitting in the prelate seat and all of this, that, and the, all the way down to the usher on an usher board. At any given time, something can happen and you'll say, oh my Lord, what's going on? Yeah. But you don't lose hope. You don't lose yeah. trust in God. Yeah. You know why? It says right there, blessed are those who are poor in spirit. And sometimes we get poor in spirit, but we yeah. know the God that we serve. Therefore, guess what? We are blessed for the kingdom of heaven is ours. Yeah. It belongs to us. Yeah. Don't lose your faith. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Blessed are they that mourn. You won't cry sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes you're going to lose a loved one. You might lose a job. You might lose your house. You might lose your car. Let me tell you something. All of that has happened to me and I cried. But you know what it told me? Right? I'm still blessed. It said, blessed are they that more. Guess what? I was comforted. Don't you know there's no comfort like the comfort of the Holy Ghost? The whole, Jesus said, look, I'm going to leave you all. I got to go back to the Father and talk to his disciples. I got to leave, go back to the Father. I'm going to leave you with the comforter. The Holy Spirit. I'm telling you something. When uh, so people would look at me and say, you know, wow, well, Joy, you got hit. You know, your grandmother died, your mother died, you lost a brother, sister, you lost your father. Yeah, I'm not gonna stand nowhere and say nothing. When I had my moments and I had my time behind my clothes, I cried like a baby because I missed them. I was mourning. But it was something once again and falling back on the word of God. That said, I will be a father to the fatherless. I will be a husband to the husbandless. I am your shepherd that you shall not want. want. Those, the, the word of God begin to just flow up from the inside. And you know what? You start that little, little sniff, sniff. You know, that's right. You know what? But God got me. He said he would never leave me nor forsake me. And I'm going, you know, I'm going to exchange these garments right now of heaviness. And I'm going to start praising you, God, because you're good. I'm going to start praising you, God, because you're still keeping me. You're still watching out for me. I'm going to give you more. And before you know it, you're out of that thing of mourning. Bless it. Bless it. Bless it. Are they that mourn? You're going to come. This Holy Spirit is going to comfort you. Blessed are those that are me. You want to inherit the earth. Let me tell you something. You don't always have to be in the spotlight. You don't all, let me, I, I received a, an award from the mayor, and I wasn't even at the event. I wasn't even there. One of my coworkers, she called me and she said, I don't, you got an award. I received it on your behalf. I said, Well, bless me in the name of the Lord. God, Lord. You know, there's places you don't have to be walking around all like you saw in Paul Tay. Let me tell you something. People know your name. As long as you serve the great I am, as long as you stand right before the Lord, when you look in the mirror at the end of each day and you say, Lord, are you pleased with me? And the Holy Amen. Spirit tells you, okay, and you can lay your head down on the pillow, you are right. Amen. You are right. Amen. Make sure you're doing your best. Everything that you do, do it with a spirit of excellence. Your name is going to go into places that you have not even stepped foot into. People are going to know you before you even come into their presence. Because your name will already be out there. Because a good name is better than riches. Amen. Walk around with a meek spirit. You're not going to show butt, show bold, look at me. Oh, I can do this, I can do that. Your gift is going to make room for you. Say me. Say humble. God is in due time and due season. He's going to award you openly before men and women. He lets us know that we are blessed when we are meek. Because then the meek, what do they do? What do they get? They inherit the earth. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So if you do what he has asked you to do with a meek and humble spirit, it belongs to you too. You're blessed. You're blessed. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness. They're going to be filled. You're going to be filled. See, God is going to fill you up with his spirit. When you walk around, you say, Lord, I want to do right. I want to be pleasing in your sight. I want the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart to be acceptable in your sight. God is going to make sure that you are filled. And let me tell you something. There's people out here who got money. I mean, a lot of it, but they're still not happy. 
And it's because they are not filled. They are not filled with the Spirit of God working on the inside of them because they don't seek after righteousness. Sometimes people, when they get money, they start doing some crazy things because they feel like, well, I already experienced that. What can be more beyond that? And they start doing crazy things because they're trying to fill themselves. In order to be filled, and which is a blessed feeling, it's a great feeling when you're filled with the Spirit of God, you have to seek after righteousness. Do what is right. Do what is pleasing in the sight of the Lord. Because when you do that, you're blessed. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Now, you may think that's not all that intense of. Oh, yes, it is. Because let me tell you something. You can do something right 99 times. You do something wrong one time. One time. Mankind, they will not let it go. Y'all heard see what happened at the Oscars, right? They're not going to let that go. No, despite of all the good things he did, pride and this, that, and other, they're going to keep talking about it, talking about it, talking about it. That's because that's the way mankind is. But see, God, his mercy, they're what? New every morning. Yeah. God cleans the slate. As long as we repent and say, Lord, forgive me, have mercy on my soul, he cleans the slate. And every day is a new day that we get an opportunity to start all over again with him. That's why you got to be merciful as well. Because when your time comes, my grandma used to tell me this. Don't, don't talk about people when they mess up. Don't talk about people when they fall short. She said, because if it should ever happen to you, you want people to be nice to you. Amen. And I found that to be a truth. When it's your time, when you want, when you make a little mistake, it could be anything on your job. Not intentionally, you make a mistake. You didn't do something, didn't do the project the way you were supposed to do it. Maybe you didn't cross certain T's and dot certain I's. But when you have a loving spirit, when you're merciful and you show compassion to other people, you know what? You'll have people to say, I got you. I, I, I'll work it out for you. Don't even worry about it. They'll tell you this, uh-uh. It, 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 I'll handle it. I got you. Be merciful. Because when it's your time, you don't want somebody to be merciful to you. Blessed are they that are pure in heart. Where they shall see God. That is the ultimate goal of every believer. We want to make heaven our home. But you got to be pure in heart. You can't have sneaky motives. You can't have ill intention. You can't be doing things uh, um, because once again, you, you, you pretending that you know I'm trying to be meek and mouth, but in all actuality, you, you want fame and notoriety. No, that's not what it's about. You have to make sure that you are pure. Your intentions are pure. Whatever you're doing, whatever whatever God has called you to do as far as ministry, your career, working with other people, have pure intentions, have a pure heart. Because that's what's gonna make that's what's gonna make heaven your home. Not not you say, Oh, but I did all this. You know what the word said? It's gonna many that's gonna get to heaven. And he's gonna say, Who are you? And they say, Well, wait, I did this and I did that, and that. Okay, but I, I know you're not. Depart from me. You sin of iniquity, I don't know you. Because their heart wasn't right. We got to make sure that our heart is right. And whatever we do, we have to make sure that it's pure and it's with the right intention. Blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called the children of God. I don't mind people calling me a child of the Most High God. I remember uh, when I was younger, um, I didn't understand it. Like, I used to get teased because I was, you know, a, a preacher's kid. and I used to get picked on and things like that. And I didn't understand it. I, I really didn't understand it because I was just like, what? I serve God. Like, God is like the best thing. Like, it's nobody greater than him. Why would, why would they tease me for loving God and talking about God? Now, I understand it because I was younger that, of course, they didn't know, you know, the way I was being taught. They didn't have that understanding of that relationship with God. And so, it, it calls for them to look at me differently. So, it, it, you know, at certain times, you know, people will become evil. People will come mean. People will, you know, call your names. Sometimes they would, you know, want to pick a fight with you just because you believe in God. And so that's why I always look at that uh, a scripture that says uh, you're going to be persecuted. We're going to be persecuted. But as long as it's for his name's sake, as long as we are persecuted and it's, what, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. So the peacemaker, you're called a child of God. That is the best title any believer can receive. Not an apostle, not a bishop, 
Not evangelist, prophet, pastor, teacher. It's child of God. See, because when you are noted as a child of God, anybody that knows a child of a parent, like my, the, the, the child of Doom, the child of Dennis, you give those attributes according to that child's parents because you know that, that parent, you know what the parent has done in life, you know what the parent has, um, has given as far as their, their, uh, maybe their charity, their services, or what have you. So, when you are connected as being called a child of God, don't you know who you are? You're royalty. You're a peculiar people, a royal priesthood, a child of the Most High God. That means that you have the ability to go boldly to the throne of grace. As a child of God, you can call on his name in the time of trouble. At least you dash your foot against the stone. He will cause for the angels to encamp about you. Know who you are. Yes. A child of God. Yes. Peacemakers. You're blessed. You're blessed. Those are persecuted for righteousness sake. Yours is the kingdom of heaven. The king. Now it says here, uh, when you go back, it says uh, in verse 5, that uh, the meek will inherit the earth. But when you go to 10, and when you are persecuted persecute for righteousness, they, you want the, the, the kingdom of heaven is yours. The kingdom of heaven is yours. See, remember what Jesus read? He said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, people waiting for the kingdom of God, you know, when they get to heaven. But you know, there's a kingdom here on earth. The kingdom of God is through his people that are here on earth. And so it tells us right here that those who are persecuted for righteousness, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What? Why is that important? See, because whatever we bind on earth, it will be bound in heaven. Whenever we ask, we know that we're asking the Father and he's going to release and open up the atmosphere for things to transform right here on earth. It says there is the kingdom of heaven. Now, not only are you a child of God, now you have authority. Let me tell you something. I gotta share this story with you. I share this one with you. I'm gonna I'm close it up because I'm almost there to the end. I had a friend that told me, uh, uh, she was talking to me and I love her dearly. She's um, a beautiful person. And she said to me, um, working along with her, she said, Dawn, people respect you, not just because of what you're doing, not because of just, you know, your career choice right now. They respect you because you're a woman of God. And I looked at her, I mean, because we weren't at that moment talking about church or anything like that. She she just came, you know, from the left with it. And, I, and it was a moment where it clicked my spirit, and I said, let me tune in closer to this moment as she was talking. Because at that moment in that time, she didn't even realize how God was using her. She was telling me, she was saying, ne never ever think for one moment that when you come around, people, they feel that God is in your life. Never ever think for a moment, even though, you know, things are political, we got to keep things politically correct, or we got to say things according to law, we have to say things according to the contract. She said, trust and believe when you speak, she said, when you speak, people are listening because they know that you are one of God. Let me tell you something. People are going to do things. People are going to say things. But you have to know the authority that God has given you. And I'm saying, once again, remember, you got to stay meek. got to stay meek. But understand the authority of God in your life. So that when you walk in the presence of others, sometimes they will not say anything. Not because they don't like you. They may not understand you. They may not, they, they may feel something in their spirit. Maybe they're working their spirit man out. They don't quite, they could be a good person and they just say, there's something about this one right here. I don't know. She made me fidget. He makes me fidget. And it's because you are a standard. Amen. You have become a standard. Yeah. The way you have conducted your life, the way you speak, the way you carry yourself, mm. the way you stay in the presence of God by reading the word, by praying, and by fasting. You don't have to tell people that, but they'll know, they'll feel something different about you. Understand when it says that theirs is the kingdom of heaven, that's you have authority. Whatever we find here on earth is going to be bound in heaven. 
Whatever is loose, Lord, we say loose blessings. Lord, loose healing. Lord, loose, uh, 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 loose uh, uh, the spirit of peace. Whatever we loose here, and we say loose, and we command it, heaven hears. And those things are loose. And they happen. Signs, wonders, and miracles, they follow the believer. They don't just follow apostles. I don't know where people got that from. They follow the believer. Each and every one of us have a measure of faith to be operative in the earth. Once again, those persecuted for righteousness say, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revive you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. You are the last. You are somebody say, I am blessed. Come on, say it like you know it. I am blessed. Say it with confidence. I am blessed. And see, when you start to apply the attitude of the attitudes to in your life, then that's when you will start seeing the tangible blessings come through. See, a lot of people, God is working on us. He's chiseling us. We're on the uh, 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 we're on the, uh, the potter's in the potter's hand, and he's molding us. He's he's defining us, and he's working on us. And some of these things we have not yet understood. If you feel that there's God, did you forget me? No, God has not forgotten you. He's working on you. He's working on those attitudes. He's working on you to get into that place and that mind for you to understand who you are in Him. Because sometimes tangible blessings can sometimes cause the people to fall out of the will of God. Mm-hmm. It happens. People pray, Lord bless me with the job, and God bless you with the job. You don't see them coming to church no more. Mm-hmm. God bless you with my vehicle. God bless you. I want you to come. God bless you with the vehicle. You ride everywhere else, but to the church, of, to the church of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Some people forget about God and they get tangible blessings. That's why God got to work on us on the spiritual blessings, on the internal blessings. Yeah. On the spiritual blessings. See, because once we understand those types of blessings, once we say, okay, I've got it, I understand. Now, this is making and molding me. This is making me a better person. This is making me a better soldier in the army of the Lord. That's when God said, okay, you're ready. You know how you have uh, those who have children? When you have little children, you see them as they grow, and you know they want to do certain things, and it's that you, you say, no, you're not, you're not ready yet. Because you're looking at their maturity with it. You're looking at, can they handle it? And when you feel that they can handle it, you say, okay, go ahead, you can do that. It's the same thing. Blessings are not just financial or material. Blessings are spiritual. Blessings are the things that work on you to define you to be a better person. And when God sees fit for you to get a material blessing, remember all of what he's done for you spiritually. So that you can maintain and help somebody else. Amen. 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 Lord, we just thank you and we praise you and we give you honor. Lord, for your word, which is such a great light to each and every one of us who hear. Lord, we just thank you because, Father God, it just shows us on how to be better human beings. Lord, as we live on this earth, Lord, we know we want to make heaven our home. But while we're here... We want to also be able to live an abundant and good life. We want to be, Father God, the light that shines before men. We want to be, Father God, that beacon of light that shows forth your glory in times of darkness. We want to be your peacemakers, Father God. We want to be those, oh God, who will go out no matter what people say about us. Let our light shine. We want to be able, Father God, to allow for you to get the glory out of our lives by being meek being humble, Father. We want, Father God, for the authority that you have given us in this earth, oh God, to be able to to acknowledge it and execute it, Father God, as we face different types of situations and trials and occurrences. Father God, help us to remember the attitudes on what we are supposed to be, the way we're supposed to act. Things are going to happen. But Father God, as long as you are there with us, we know that we are blessed. We thank you for calling us sons and daughters. 
We thank you through Jesus Christ. We have been adopted and we are now heirs to the throne of grace. We thank you. So, Father, as we continue to sojourn and as we continue, Father God, to hold on to your unchanging hand, let us remember, Father God, to keep ourselves adjusted according to your divine spirit. So, Father God, we can be all that we can be while we are yet living here on this earth. We honor you, we bless you, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together right there. Hallelujah. God is good. Bless be his wonderful name. You know, I, I've read that scripture over, I don't know, over hundreds of times. But it speaks differently every time I read it. And um, I just want people to know that you are blessed. You're blessed. And that there are certain things that are going to happen in life. But God got you. As long as God got you, you don't have to worry about anything. You're blessed just because God got you. 